This is lesson two, where I'm going to be continuing the discussion between cropped and full frame sensor size, but before we do that, as promised, we have to answer all those questions that were asked in lesson one, so here's your review. Number one, if I say that I'm a photographer, does that mean that I don't shoot video? We talked in lesson one about the ambiguity of some of these terms, and I said that I just say I'm a photographer even though I shoot photography and video. I have friends that are photographers that don't shoot video. I have friends that are all video guys. I mean, they really are into broadcast media and they are producers on, on sets. Their title is video production. They also take amazing still photos. Number two, if I tell you I shoot video, does that mean that I don't know how to also shoot great still images? No, of course not. People hire me as a photographer and they say, I want a professional photographer to shoot this event. And they'll often ask me, do I still, do I shoot video as well? And because you can't shoot both at the same time, typically, I've tried it a couple of times uh, with varying degrees of success, I often hire somebody else to shoot the video for me when I shoot still pictures. But I still just say I'm a photographer because I feel like it's a lot easier. My business card says photographer. Number three, the DP on a movie set is responsible for A, video cameras, B, lighting, C, still images, or D, all of the above, including lens choice. Remember guys that if you're ever given a multiple choice question and there is an answer that's all of the above, 90% of the time it's going to be all of the above. And in this case, that's what I was talking about when I was talking about how the director of photography, it's the title of photography, mind you, he is responsible for everything on a movie set having to do with how it's filmed, and he's the one that earns the award for director of cinematography. Question number four, what is the standard size photography frame for both digital and film? And of course, that's 35 millimeter. So I hope that helps. I hope you got them all right. Thanks so much for following along. And now let's get going on lesson two. Professional DSLR and mirrorless cameras have a sensor that are the same size as a standard frame of 35 millimeter film and are known as what's called full frame cameras. Now, there are actually a few point and shoot cameras that also have full frame sensors, but they're very expensive when compared to most of the point and shoot cameras on the market that have crop sensors like this one. Full frame cameras are typically considered professional. They are heavier, have more features, and are better in low light because of the bigger sensor size. And of course, when compared to a crop sensor, they will give you a bigger field of view when standing in the same area because the sensor is bigger. Any sensor that is not full frame is considered a crop sensor of some sort. The best ones have a crop factor of 1.6, which means that if I'm looking at this camera, and I want to compare it to a full frame, I have to multiply the measurements of this one by 1.6 to understand the difference. Crop sensor cameras are great when it comes to shooting sports because they actually get you closer to the action, but when it comes to wide angle, it's not going to be as big as a sensor that is larger. For example, if I'm standing in a field trying to take a picture of the state capitol and I can get it all in frame with my full frame camera, if I switched over to a crop censored camera and stayed in exactly the same place, I wouldn't be able to get the whole thing in frame because my sensor size is smaller and it's going to record an image that is actually smaller. In order to get the same result as a full frame, as far as what is in frame, I would have to take several steps back in order to get the same field of view. Crop censored cameras are cheaper and they have a different crop factor when compared to a camera with a full frame sensor. Your cell phone has one of the smallest sensors, and remember that it cannot be any larger than the lens that you see on the back there. So when trying to compare sensor size, if you look at the size of this lens as opposed to the size of this lens, it should be obvious to see that this camera is going to have a larger sensor, which typically means better in low light and more detail and contrast. All in all, better quality. Compact cameras such as this point and shoot have a slightly larger sensor than the one found on your cell phone. And of course, mirrorless and DSLR cameras have the largest of the crop sensors with the best ones having a crop factor, as I mentioned, about 1.6, depending on the manufacturer. We call these camera sensors APS-C. And again, on the mirrorless cameras, when I take off the lens, you can see the APS-C sensor right there. All you really need to know about sensors right now is that 35 millimeter is the standard. Anything smaller is considered cropped. And the bigger the sensor you have, the better the quality and the better performance you will have in low light, but also the more expensive and heavier that camera is going to be. 
Now to understand how that affects your camera and your picture taking, let's talk about two different situations. Taking pics outside in the sun where there is plenty of light is easy for any camera, no matter the sensor size, even for your cell phone. Taking pics at night at a football game or in a dimly lit dance studio where the subject is moving very fast, sometimes very far away from you, in usually very little light, is probably one of the hardest things for your camera to capture. Having a camera with a full frame sensor that is better quality, it gives you better performance in low light, will always help with situations such as this. So why doesn't everyone just get a camera with a full frame sensor? Two reasons, size and price. The sensor's not just big, it's thick. A cell phone with a full frame sensor would be over an inch thick and no longer fit in your leggings. The least expensive cameras that have full frame sensors are typically about $1,000 to start. Even the point and shoot cameras that I was referring to earlier that actually have a full frame sensor in them, they're typically about $1,000. Many are much more than that, and that is for the body only and does not include the lens. Keep in mind that full frame lenses are more expensive and are really not as compatible with crop sensored cameras, which means if you're buying a full frame camera, you're buying full frame lenses, your crop sensored lenses that you are using on your crop camera are not going to work. Except in very specific instances. Most of the time it's going to give you a vignette because what you're doing is you're taking a smaller lens and putting it on a larger sensor. In this series, I'm going to talk about price and the limitations of equipment, but also how to get around it by understanding how to use the camera settings. I hope you stick with it and check out the lessons that follow. Now let's see how well you were paying attention. Question number one, what do we call a camera with a sensor measuring 35 millimeter? Question number two, what do we call a sensor that is smaller than 35 millimeter? And number three, a larger sensor size will be more expensive, but what do you get for your money? If you want to learn more about sensor size and why it's important, please check out the article in the description by Simon Crisp. It's from a few years ago, but it does an excellent job of explaining all of this in more detail. And it's where I took some of the graphics for this video, so I want to give Simon credit.